crude oil price is sitting close to $70 a barrel, uh, despite worries that Florence could disrupt supplies of fuel, particularly along the East Coast. Joining us now, Andy Lipow, Lipow Oil Associates president. Andy, what's the impact of this massive uh, storm, this flooding event on not just production, but really the transportation of fuel uh, through, you know, through the East Coast, so to speak? Well, good morning, Dagan. Uh, as far as Florence goes, there's been no impact on oil production, nor has there been an impact on refining operations up in the Philadelphia and New Jersey area. But what the oil market is really worried about is the colonial pipeline and plantation pipeline that are running through South Carolina and North Carolina, and whether this flooding could impact those pump stations or wash out the pipelines. But so far, so good. There has been no impact. Uh, hey, Andy, Mike Block here. Just thinking about this, you know, we, we're, we are still worried about the Colonial Pipeline, even though, as you just said, there's no impact so far. Is the country in need of more midstream infrastructure here? Is there is there, is there is need to build it up? Is it overdone, underdone? What's your, what's your opinion on that, just thinking longer term? Well, as far as product pipelines, there's actually been an ongoing saga about the Colonial Pipeline expansion for over 10 years, and they've been back and forth with the shippers and with FERC as far as wanting to actually increase the pipeline fees to gather money to, to build a new pipeline, which would be about 1,800 miles. And of course, that was struck down by FERC. So the pipeline situation has been a stalemate for a long, long time. So in essence, what happens if the Northeast needs more gasoline or diesel fuel, it's going to be imported. Andy, good morning, Mitch Rochelle. One of the things I'm just thinking about is when we think hurricanes, we generally think wind, and we don't necessarily think flooding, per se, like this. But if you look a year ago in Houston and now this storm, the rain events are sort of becoming the bigger problem. Is the infrastructure that we have, sort of build on Michael's question, need to be fortified because the new normal may be these massive, catastrophic uh, water events as opposed to just wind? Well, I would agree with you. If the, the new event is going to be a, a, a massive amount of rain that's going to be measured in feet, I mean, the refineries, the, the terminals, the pipelines are really not built to, to withstand that amount of rain. And we've kind of seen that many, many times here in the recent past. So the place is going to have to rethink how it's going to protect itself from these massive rain events. And as you point out, it hasn't really been a wind event that's taken down the refineries over the last few years. The U.S. was recently named the world's biggest oil producer. Talk to us about that, Andy. Is everything in place to keep, uh, to keep us in that position in the years ahead? And what does it mean for, quite frankly, large parts of this economy? Well, everything is in place except for the pipeline capacity to move that oil out of the Permian Basin over to the Texas Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. As you know, the U.S. production is now nearing 11 million barrels a day, and we're expecting that it could grow by several million barrels a day over the next couple of years. But given that there's no additional pipeline capacity coming out of the Permian until really 2020, we're seeing the rate of growth forecast actually sort of decline now in the U.S. until those new pipelines, and there are three big ones that are coming on stream until they, can, they, they get online. And Andy, actually, it's the steel tariffs that have thrown a little bit of a wrench into some of those plans because of where the steel was being sourced for at least one of them. Well, we've exactly seen that happen with Plains All-American Pipeline. Mm -hmm. They went ahead and they're going to build their pipeline, and then the steel tariffs were implemented, and they have uh, warned about the higher cost of that pipeline uh, construction. But they're still going to be going ahead with building that line. It's expected to come online about a year from now, which will provide relief for those Permian Basin oil producers. Andy, I knew you'd be able to answer that question. Thank you for being here so much. Andy Lipow.